at some point we realized that the urban was kind of left behind uh, and we were not moving in tandem uh, with each other. And yet we were very sure that a lot of rural to urban migration uh, was taking place in the region at a very unprecedented level for also very good reasons that the rural economy was just not working. This is 2003, 2004, 2005, up to 2006, when our work was at its most intense. And so we then began to ask ourselves if in the rural households we've been organizing them, but we lack very specific tools with which we can analyze some of the household issues and some of the land rights issues. Uh, we thought that the models that had been used in the urban setting, the mapping and enumerations that happens in urban settings, could be tailored for the rural work that we were doing. And that's what uh, inspired the meeting that happened between us to begin to ask the folks who are using these tools, how could these tools be applied in a rural setting? And so we wanted to model this and, and, and see how far we can go with it, uh, and in a sense introduce it as another tool that we could use for organizing the rural, the rural area. Of course, the areas were vast, much wider than what we were familiar with in the urban informal settlement, and the houses were you know, dispersed. But we saw the potential that tool could have in helping our engagement because at some point we realized we have to talk to the state and the institutions. Uh, it was very good and nice to oppose everything the state did. <laughs> but at some point we needed to also make concrete suggestions and get into boardrooms and negotiate. One thing we realized we didn't have was the tools and the skills for that engagement. Invariably, whenever government invited us to the table, we didn't have what it took to make those discussions useful. That's what led uh, Ujama to invite uh, the team from Nairobi to sort of come and think with us. And so we couldn't think about the tool only for the rural areas because a small inventory that we did revealed that Mombasa alone had upwards of a uh, hundred plus informal settlements. And we thought, you know, why don't we start also doing some urban work and organizing? While we test the tool for some rural, uh, you know, households at the same time. So that's how we tried to use this mapping and enumeration in a place called Marereni, where there are salt farms and uh, a lot of the salt farms have displaced people from their original dwellings and taken them into roadsides and so on. And then there are a lot of other issues with salt that I, I won't go into now. But then we were able to map those communities along the salt belt, about 50 kilometer stretch, generate maps and, you know, uh, a lot of data that would help us understand the issues. So that when we were speaking with the state about salt, we were able to say, look, this salt company leased this amount of acreage. For the last 40 years that they've been around, they've only used this much acreage. It means the idle land that they haven't used could be put to other uses because they don't need it. You know, then it makes the engagement more focused and more you know, critical. And after that, we used the tools elsewhere. But then, in the urban setting, the work that we had started doing in the urban setting, you know, helped us to also begin saying, how can we launch Mungano, the type that we have in Nairobi, in the Mombasa context? Because I think we needed the poor to organize themselves and also have agency at the urban level with which they could use to engage politicians and you know, development actors. Mombasa, of course, also as a second city had lots of plants, urban, you know, what they call slum upgrading, uh, you know, the need for us to provide services in, in these informal settlements became uppermost. 
Uh, for a long time, the informal settlements were ignored. But I think the discourse around cultural, social, and economic rights was making the case you know, that these people need services. They have rights. And when that rights discourse you know, picked up, particularly with the enactment of the new constitution, it was possible to make interventions on behalf of uh, the urban poor in Mombasa to also be given the services that other people are getting. And that's how we started to organize uh, the city. And one, one of the things we did, uh, Pamoja Trust needed uh, two dedicated staff that would do the Mombasa work. And we were happy to second two of those individuals to, to conduct the work. We were also able to afford Pamoja Trust a desk at the center you know, so that the work could be done with a lot of support and we offered backstopping for everything so that AMT can launch its activities and begin to support groups and individuals within the Mungano network to find resources with which they could make little investments uh, to change their lives and their circumstances.